system, excuse me, uh, it, we're going to discuss is the lattice plotting system. This is one of the first packages uh, that made plotting in R easier than what you had with base R. Uh, so uh, lattice is meant to make multivariate graphics and it's meant to uh, allow for easy creation of multiple graphics where you're splitting up based off of some categorical variable. If you're more interested in Lattice, there is a book for Lattice, uh, basically called Lattice. Here's a here's a, the first uh, or the cover page of the book, Lattice Multivariate da Data Visualization with R by Deep Bayan Sarker. Uh, so if you are more interested in how Lattice works, you can uh, read that book. Uh, but in Lattice, you're often creating a plot using a single function call. And you're using a function call that is specifically for that type of plot. For example, if we want to make an XY scatter plot, we use, a, we use the Lattice function XY plot. And also Lattice is taking advantage of the formula interface that comes with R. So for instance, if we want to make a plot of the sepal length versus the sepal length, uh, sepal length versus sepal width uh, from the iris data set, we can do so with such a call. And lattice functions generally are taking great advantage of the formula interface. So here is the corresponding plot for sepal length versus sepal width, which admittedly is just as easy as the plot call using base R. So, so far we don't see much advantage to lattice. But where Lattice really shines is when we want to start making uh, multiple plots for uh, different categorical variables. So for example, if we want to split up the plots based off of the <coughs> species variable, then we can do so like so, where we add, in addition to that formula, a horizontal line, on, which is a key on the keyboard, and on the other side of that line we have species, which is denoting the variable by which we want to split the plot. And then we still have data equals iris. And this is the resulting plot, which actually looks quite nice. And we don't have any sort of redundancy. It already is taking care of... Uh, it, it's already taking care of uh, the uh, X and Y axes and their scaling. And by default, it knows that we want these axes to have the same scale. I mean, admittedly, sometimes we don't want that, but that should be the default. So already we have a plot that also, in addition to that, actually looks, at least in my opinion, pretty good. I think the lattice plots actually look nicer than the base R plots. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. I closed the wrong window. So we're going to have to start that up again. Oops. Uh, I don't want that. So... Uh, documents, book down book, center box. So, lecture four. So, right, let's start that up again. My apologies. Uh, all right, so let's uh, get our running again. And we will load in the lattice library. I don't think we need the stuff from the other, from earlier though. All right, so uh, lattice wants to create complex graphics using a single function call. So if we want to make, say, a comparative dot plot, we can use the dot plot function, uh, and we can say, all right, uh, split it up based off of the species to create a comparative dot plot. This is what we get actually allows for nice comparison of the pedal length we see, or pedal length, not pedal length. Um, we do see, for example, that Satoza tends to have shorter pedals, while Versicolor seems to have uh, be in the middle, and Virginica has larger pedals. Uh, we can uh, make uh, a dot plot that splits also based off of the origin. Uh, oh, we need the Cars 93 data set. That is in... Uh, is that in mass... I think that's a mass. Yeah, that's a mass. So here's an, another comparative dot plot uh, where we're comparing uh, the price of compact cars, large cars, mid-sized cars for a bunch of cars in, from 1993. Very old data set. Uh, and in addition to splitting based off of 
of the type of car and creating these comparative dot plots were also splitting based on the on the origin of the car whether they're american or non-american uh we have uh comparative box and whisker plots or box plots using the bw plot function which is a nicer comparison uh we can compare histograms here's the histogram call there isn't anything on the left hand side of the tilde uh for this because there isn't really another variable that we are uh tracking here since histograms are essentially a univariate visualization but we can still create multiple histograms at the same time by saying that we should split our plot based off of the origin of the car which is a categorical variable and similarly we can do a comparative density plot and it looks quite nice so histograms uh, density plots those are two relatively interchangeable plots so that's it for Lattice. I really don't have a whole lot to say about it because I'm not really sure what Lattice's place in the plotting world is now. I guess Lattice is probably... Uh, I mean, So the advantage of the base R system is that it's always available and it's very robust. Uh, the advantage of... Uh, robust in the sense that it's stable. like It's not going to change. It's always going to be what it is. So you don't have to worry too much about like, like it over time. So, super, super stable. The lattice system, I would say, is probably the simplest of all three of them. It's kind of a scary thing to say, but I think that's probably fair to say. Because ggplot2 is powerful, and for making complex plots, it's simple. But I wouldn't say it's a simple est plotting system. On the other hand, I think people just make their plots using ggplot2 these days. So that's all I re really have to say about Lattice. Uh, so I'll see you in the ggplot2 video.